Welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. When you're ready to transform your sales for today's transforming market, we've got you covered with your host, the queen of cold calling and founder of Salesology, award-winning author, speaker, sales trainer, and coach, Wendy Weiss. Hi, welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. And I'm your host, Wendy Weiss. I am the founder of Salesology and creator of the Salesology Prospecting Method. And I'm also known as the queen of cold calling. And today I have as my very special guest, uh, Jacob Hahn. And he is the co-founder of Sales Doc. He's also the CEO of Sales Doc. And um, Jacob has a hands-on approach to sales. He has provided leadership and consulting services to over 150 organizations, including Uber Eats, Microsoft, YSoft, and Google. He helps them set up effective sales processes and implement scale scalable sales methodologies. So I'm going to have to ask him about that. And um, alongside his work at Sales Talk, Jacob has co-founded Banana.bi and served as the head of sales for YSoft Clairbo. Um, and through his various roles, he's developed a passion for helping organizations break free from sales mediocrity and unlock their full potential. So we're going to have to talk about that, too. Um, Jacob is dedicated to showing audiences that sales can be a fulfilling and rewarding profession when approached with the right mindset and techniques. And I would I would have to agree with that. So welcome, Jacob. Hi, Wendy. Thank you very much for the introduction and for having me here. I must say you're the first queen I'm on the podcast with. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again? <laughs> that you're the first queen I'm shooting the podcast with. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm honored. Um, so let's, uh, let's begin at the beginning. How did you uh, come to be the co-founder and CEO of Sales Talk, along with all the other things that you've been involved in? Yeah, I think it all started uh, as a first job. You usually get to the sales job. Uh, it's like where, when you don't have much of qualification at the high school, you say, okay, you can, I can try selling. And uh, I, I like the sales game and I still, uh, I stayed with the sales game. And after several instances working uh, for the companies, uh, I firstly got, uh, after university, started working for a tech company. And uh, I realized, oh, that's actually nice how it works. And uh, I felt that we could do that, do that better as well. So that's uh, why me and my co-founder set it up, uh, firstly, outsourcing company, which uh, afterwards transferred into the sales consultancy company. Okay. And uh, so your focus is effective sales processes and uh, scaling sales methodologies. So the first thing I have to ask you is, uh, why do you need sales processes? Yeah. Uh, just to, as a disclaimer, I used to hate processes. You know, I was always the the type of salesperson uh, who can who can bring some deals without any system and so on. But afterwards, you realize that the system outcompetes the talents. And uh, having um, having the right process uh, gives you the standard of uh, how you run the sales. Because every time, if you don't have it, then every meeting you do a little bit differently. Every uh, every pro like every cell cycle you do differently and sometimes you do, you make it within three months, sometimes you make it within 12 months. And the difference between three and 12 months is just the mistakes you make, you make along the way. And that's why we started uh, to see that, hey, this is the system. If you implement the system, then you can very quickly improve the whole sales organization because then you, you take the best salesperson the way how the best salesperson sell and you take it and you try to blueprint it uh, and put it on the rest of the team, and then by default you increase it, right? So, so we became we became a bit more obsessed with the sales processes and methodologies and pattern methodologies and patterns that you can implement uh, implement to your sales team. Well, I love what you're saying, and I I actually 
I might have to steal what you are saying. Um, that process beats talent. I love that. And uh, so why is that such a hard concept for so many business owners? Um, because they, in my experience, most business owners think it's the other way around. They're, exactly. look, they're looking for the talent. They're looking for that. I'm making finger quotes here. Born salesperson. And they think that's all they need. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, it's from the history and it's just started to become more professional. It's not just about a talkative salesperson who can uh, uh, who can sell ice to Eskimo, uh, but it's all more about there are some patterns and systems inside of it. And also, I think salespeople are a little bit resistant to changes uh, by default, especially the ones who, who had successes uh, with their approach, uh, which was very unstructured. I say I can. I still could bring the businesses. So why are you trying to put me and uh, implement something new on me? Uh, and there's also a little bit of ego. I'm the one bringing the money, right? So, <laughs> so uh, putting the putting the meat on the table. Uh, however, it's changing, and uh, you can see that when you look at the technological segment, the way how the sales is structured, what is measured, how is process oriented. Uh, uh, you can see it's totally different from the other. From the other segment, let's say manufacturing uh, and so on. So in five years, there's going to be all over the market. I could see everybody will use it as a as uh, as a standard. Okay. So how do you get that experienced salesperson on your team? If you're someone you manage a team, and maybe you've got some new hires and you can tell them what to do because they're brand new and they'll do it. But then you've got those experienced people that have been doing whatever it is they've been doing and they're resistant to change. How do you get some of those people to do something that's different from what they're used to doing? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, just not to put it in the wrong direction. It doesn't mean experience uh, doesn't, doesn't equal not able to change. Right. So the coachability is still uh, very important. So once you're getting in, uh, anybody into your team, is the person coachable? And uh, very often we see it, we get to the organization which was growing uh, organically uh, or it was not growing for several years. And then it, you come to the organization and you start implementing the system. And the system makes the cells more transparent. You know what they do correctly on the meetings, what they don't do, don't do correctly, uh, how they can control the process, how they can guide the customer throughout the journey uh, of the of buying. And some of the people will start catching up and jumping on it and say, "Hey, actually, it makes sense. Uh, I should call the customer and ask him what are the decision criteria and how do they make a decision? What are his priorities? Not the company use case, I understand, but based on." which criteria he would select the right vendor. And other salespeople would start telling you, you know, Jacob, the business is different here. We do that differently. And, and then, you, then you see that after a month, two months, you see the, the ones who start jumping on it and they are coachable, the performance is just going up, up, up. And you see that also the opportunities they have in their, in their pipeline, they're very well qualified under the control. Those are the opportunities you trust. And whereas the other ones are being are a little bit behind and the ones who start being behind usually they get fired yeah that's also and well then then they can find another organization or is which is not that passionate about growth uh, they can do their game they can bring the 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 performance the organization expect but uh yeah not 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 the fit anymore for the for the original one so when you talk about having a process or having a, a system what exactly does that mean? What exactly is included in having a sales process or a sales system? Yeah. So when we start with the process, it's a journey from how you, for instance, uh, how you make a cold call, what you need to get from the cold call, what should be the next step, and uh, how you how you guide a customer throughout the whole journey. Very often in the organization, is described as a, uh, first meeting, second meeting, meeting proposal, negotiation, business done. 
uh, and there are no nothing what would guide salespeople and tell them this is actually what you need to do. The way how we look at it is that you have stages and in between stages, you have milestones that you need to complete. So if I go on the first meeting with a customer, I want to understand the use case. I, I want to understand if the use case is not solved, what, what does it mean for the customer? What And what's the urgency for the customer? Why did they, why do they want to solve it right now? They could have solved it last year or they can postpone it for the next year. I want to know who's the competition and I want to know who are the authorities who's going to be included in the sales process. And this, uh, this happens. So that's what, what uh, what I want to get from the initial conversations and and it goes farther, right? So then you want to make uh, you want to know what are the decision criteria as we know which you will make the decision, who is making the decision, uh, and so, and so on and so on and so and this is if you describe it in this way, and then you start being religious about it. One thing is to describe it and put it into your into your shelf and never touch it. The other thing is also on every weekly review or monthly review, whichever, or quarterly review, whichever you have, you take out the sales process and somebody tells you, I'm in the stage three. Uh, say, okay, perfect. But let's validate it. So you are supposed to complete 10 milestones. So who is the competition there? Who is the economic buyer? Who, who are the authorities? What is the use case? When do they want to buy it and why? And that's how you standardize the, like the optimal performance of the salespeople, because very often salespeople forget to ask or they, they don't want to ask people, hey, when they tell me, I understand the use case of the organization, but tell me what's in it for you. Why, like, what do you expect from the provider? Very rarely this question is on the, on the meeting. Okay, so um, does, when you talk about process and all these milestones uh, that need to be accomplished on each, each of the steps, um, does this include scripts? I'm curious. I, no, I don't do that with a script. Uh, so we just say, that's what we expect you to know it, how you get to that. That's the other part. And that's uh, like giving them the sales methodology. So how to run properly discovery, how to build champions inside of organization who bring you the insights, how to talk, how to get to economic buyer who signs a contract and uh, who give, uh, at the end of the day, he gives you the money or he can tell you, no, uh, I'm not, I'm not investing into that. I'm investing in something else. Uh, so how to get to economic buyer, how to talk with economic buyer, how to influence a little bit of decision criteria. So that's, uh, that's what we teach salespeople. Uh, we don't give them, we don't give them scripts. That sounds like scripts to me. It's more like methodologies than we would exactly tell them, this is what you, <laughs> these are the five sentences you should always say. Okay. So what part of your process helps the people that aren't quite sure what to say? Typically those are going to be newer people, but there's often a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, well, we look at it from the perspective, this should be the output. If you run a discovery, you should know these things. And yeah, write it down into your into your notebook or into your laptop. This is what you should take uh, get from the from the first initial conversation uh, and why you need to get it. Then we let them create, oh, it could be a script. Yeah, we let them create during the workshop. Hey, these are the questions that would lead you to the uh to the outputs and we play role plays with them and we coach them on a weekly basis but i have me personally i have always bad experience when salespeople take make a list of questions they go on the meeting and then they start asking the question why by one by one and they forgot uh, they forget about having the conversation and going deeper and deeper because they are so obsessed with the questions i want them to be obsessed with the output not with the questions okay Maybe you need to include in your methodology how to use a script. <laughs> because that's not how we both know that's yeah. not how you use a script. <laughs> so that's true. That's um, true. Yeah. So um I want to talk a little bit about uh mistakes that business owners, people that are managing a team that they make when it comes to hiring because that, that can yeah. be incredibly difficult. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, 
having the right mindset, both as a manager that manages salespeople, then also the mindset for the actual salespeople. But before we do that, we are going to pause for a word from our sponsor. And our sponsor today is the Salesology Vault. Just about every guest that I have interviewed on the Salesology Conversations with Sales Leaders podcast has had a free gift for our listeners. And what we've done is we've taken all of those gifts and we put them all in one place just for you. We call it the Salesology Vault. And it's packed full of free gifts from sales leaders, sales experts, marketing gurus, revenue generation experts. And we had another gift every single week. Um, We release a podcast every Monday. And when we release that podcast, we add a gift. So you can log in as often as you'd like, download as many gifts as you'd like. It's all free. And by the way, my special guest, Jacob Hahn, who is the co-founder of Sales Doc, also is a gift for our listeners today. So the link... Uh, Yes, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, The link to the sales vault is in the show notes. So as soon as you finish listening to this podcast, go to the show notes, click on the link. We'll be glad you did. And I am back with my special guest, Jacob Hahn, who is the co-founder of uh, Sales Doc. And um, let's talk a little bit about mistakes that business owners or sales managers make when it comes to hiring, because we've been talking about process. And in my experience, that's one of the hardest things is to get someone to follow a process. Because sales, salespeople can be a little bit like herding cats. So Talk, talk a little bit about how, how to hire good salespeople and the mistakes that businesses sometimes make when it comes to hiring salespeople. Yeah, uh, this is a super important topic, as, as you mentioned, because when you look at it from, from the perspective of the cost, there is, this is the, the costliest thing in the, in the sales department is the mishire that causes you the, the most of the money or what you can do as a mistake in sales. Like, and in the same time, not that many organizations pay attention to the improving the process, improving the way they're recruiting, which, which, which makes it a little bit absurd, right? You know, it costs you the most of the money. <laughs> this is the, this is the most expensive mistake for you, but in the same time, you don't care that much. Uh, and you care more about how much you spend for the license for CRM, for instance, whether $80, $80 or $90. So for me, if I could, uh, if I take it a look at it from the, from the high level, would be that it is not described how the success looks like when it comes to the hiring. You don't know who you want to get, you don't have specified criteria. And if you have specified criteria, criteria, you don't stick to them. You have too many of them. And then you say, ah, it doesn't matter for this candidate. It doesn't matter for this candidate. It does. It does. Uh, uh, how I look at it is I always want to have three, four massive criteria that I always, or three to five massive criteria for the sales role. And if the candidate doesn't, doesn't, doesn't fulfill one of them, then it's eliminated from the sales process. Because simply by just having two out of three or four out of five will decrease the probability that the candidate will stay with you and will be successful. And the get and the sales is about probability game, right? So and it depends for each of the role in the sales. For the hunter salesperson, you need a little bit different profile than for the farmer salesperson, the same as for the one who makes cold calls and schedule meetings for, for the other ones. And you simply just have to start doing it and defining the criteria. So if you look at your sales team and you have five account executives, you look at them and there are two of them, one of them, which is outperforming everybody. And there are two or one of them, which are like poor performers. And you look at the top ones and say, what makes them top? You look at the, like, uh, 
the lowest performance and you ask them what is missing here why are they not performing very well by their characteristics and that starts to give you the insights you formalize the insights you go you go for the next hire and then you follow and then you're strict about it so for instance when i look at the account executives the hunters which are supposed to bring the business the new sales for me it's always there has to be achiever you have to see the achievement path over the over their life it doesn't have to be in the uh, career wise that uh, they just skyrocketed in some of the organization but you see the the threads also when they were at high school when they were at the university or elementary school they were playing soccer football they got to some league they ended up as a, in the math olympic uh, in the national level whichever uh, whichever achievement is there you can see it, it's in, the, in these people so once you hire them you don't have to motivate them that much now you have to go to the market and make another call make another call they will do that by themselves because they want to achieve the quota they want to achieve the, the targets so it's about having these things formalized and realistic to it well i love that you're talking about the difference in roles because um i see a lot that companies kind of lump everything together and uh hunting and farming are two completely different skill sets and the, yeah and the characteristics of somebody that is a hunter are very different from the characteristics of somebody that's that's a farmer um and it's also very interesting uh, because we've been talking about process and you need to have the sales process uh that all of your sales people are following and then you wouldn't have a process for hiring people to follow your process. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um and and you talked a little bit earlier you were talking about uh, people that are coachable. So yeah. when you're looking at hiring, how do you figure out if somebody is coachable? Yeah. Uh so when we hire for us or, or for our clients, uh we run a role play with them. So part of the part of the interviewing process after we do we like you firstly feel a little bit once you start getting into the cv uh what they do what they do uh, how how did they perform if you ask it as a right question but ultimately then we go for the role play so here is your pro here is the product that we sell you have one day to learn the product uh industry a little bit and then we have 30 minutes discover meeting then we check how well they perform usually the performance isn't like isn't really good isn't as it should be let's put it this way uh so then uh, you start giving them feedback and again you see do they want to justify why they did in a way as they did did they disagree with you those are all already the red flags when you say okay here i can finish it uh but you still end up with the people who say oh yeah you're right you're right uh, that's totally true i should have implemented uh, yeah i should have used that this one and very often i don't disqualify these people if i if i'm not looking for a very experienced sales person i'm looking for mid person or a junior i don't disqualify them because it's not their fault they had some leaders before who didn't teach them that uh they thought they, they were doing right in the past job and they they're coming with the best they have to me uh and they think that they're doing right So I explain them a little bit of the methodology I saw and hey, that's how you should have run it and they say yeah that makes perfectly perfectly sense so we tell them okay so let's run the role play in two days again uh prepared for that and then we look at the, what's the delta in the performance so did did they improve between first and second uh second role play if yes well they accepted the feedback they implemented the feedback it seems to be okay Okay. So if I understood what you were saying, you're disqualifying the people that explain why they didn't do it the way you would like them to do it. And you're disqualifying the people that tell you they have a really good reason for doing it their way. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And um so what is the mindset then that as a manager Um you know I run into a lot of managers that don't really want to manage and they just want people to like just just go sell just go sell not all managers but I've run into enough of them 
that, you know, they're very frustrated because their people aren't selling. Um, but at the same time, they don't seem to have a lot of these things in place that you've, that you've been talking about. So how should a manager be thinking about this when it comes to the sales team? Yeah, well, I think the first thing they should think of or keep the keep on their mind is if the sales team is not performing, then the mistake is somewhere around me. So I either build the wrong sales team. Let's stop. Say that again. So you, you should start with yourself. Because uh, usually when we look at it into the organization, there's some team uh, without a performance. The issue lies down uh, with the with the first line manager or with the management there. At the end, like for sure, it can happen that uh, you inherit some sales team and they put you into the role and uh, you don't know what to do with it. Uh, but the thing is, uh, you're responsible for real. Usually, you're responsible for recruiting your own team. So if your team is not performing, did you do your recruitment right? Sometimes, yeah, you could be overlooked overruled by somebody else in the organization, higher higher in the organization telling you you have to hire this person. Well, then probably you're in the wrong organization, you should leave. And uh, then it is about the number one problem in the sales organizations also is that the sales leaders just don't coach their sales people enough. They spend, uh, they, they, they spend either chasing their own quotas, sometimes they go on the meetings with them, and then they do the business instead of their salespeople, instead of teaching them how to do that. And the mistake all, and the, the root cause of all of that is usually they don't know how to do that because nobody taught them better. Or they didn't, they didn't uh, do their own research, do their own studies, uh, how, how to run it. Because when they were in the role of the salesperson, probably that was the, uh, that was the behavior they experienced from their sales, uh, sales leader. They just told them, "Hey, go and bring the business. And uh, if you if you want me on the meeting, I go on the meeting, uh, but I close it instead of you, instead of coaching coaching the salesperson." So, yeah. <laughs> so I I love everything you're saying, Jacob. You're uh, preaching to the choir here with me. But um, so I know. Uh, Switching gears, I know you have a gift for all of our listeners, so please share your share your gift. Tell us what you're giving yeah. us. Yeah, so we're talking about methodologies, right, and how to improve the sales. Um, so that's a yearly access to our online academy where we put the sales methodology that we teach uh, teach salespeople one, once we get into the organization, and it's going to be yeah one year for free for your for your listeners. Wow. To improve the sales, to improve the sales game, and there are two parts. The first one is getting to the meeting, and the other one, so it's about prospecting. And the other one is uh, once you get to the meeting, uh, what is the fastest way to convert the meeting into the business? Yes, I have the meeting now. What? So, but both important and completely different skill sets. So, uh, thank you on behalf of all of our listeners. And um, if you want to access Jacob's uh, program, one year, one year free, uh, the link is in the show notes. So as soon as you finish listening to this podcast, go to the show notes, click on the link. And uh, Jacob, if people want to get in touch with you, connect with you, what's, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, I think the easiest way nowadays is to reach me on uh, on LinkedIn. Uh I guess the URL is going to be shared also underneath the podcast. Absolutely. I've got my hand over my heart. When you're finished <laughs> listening to this podcast, go to the show notes. And if you want to connect with Jacob, the link to his LinkedIn profile is going to be in the show notes. Click on the link and connect with Jacob. Perfect. And yeah, so you have uh, been listening to Salesology conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales with my special guest, Jacob Hahn, who is the co-founder of Sales Talk. And if you found value in listening to today's podcast, 
then please think about one business owner, one entrepreneur, one sales leader, somebody that you know that you think might also find value in listening to this podcast. And please do share the link with them. And until we meet again, visualize yourself surrounded by cash, really large bills. You've been listening to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. Be sure to follow so that you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends. Tune in every week for more exciting insights and wisdom on transforming sales. And until next time, visualize yourself surrounded by cash, very large bills.